Hello everyone. Sorry about the late start. I forgot that last time I did a live stream, I did it on my other channel, so my software was like tuned for the other channel. <laughs> so I was like, why isn't this stream beginning? Um, let me just log into my Alex the Historian channel so I can look at your guys' comments. Uh, my channel. Here we go. Lower the volume. <clears throat> Wait for the ad to finish. There we are. No, oh, another one. Oh, anyway, so I still, I still have to cut this the uh, tea sandwich. So you guys will watch me do that. Um, oh, I was like, why is it so dark? I forgot my other light isn't on. There we go. That might be better. So. Only marginally better. Was it better with that light off? I feel like on the other screen everything looks so like whited out now. Let me see, hold on, I'm watching the stream itself. No, it's not bad. Okay, never mind. I don't know why, but from my screen it looks like it, you can't even see what's going on. Um, let me just say hello to everybody real quick. So, whoa, where'd the comments go? Oh no. That's what happens when I scroll to. Where is it? Live chat. There we go. Alright, let's see. Glenn, hello, Glenn. Hello, Thomas Brooks. Hello, Haley. Hello, uh, Dwight. Madeline. Brandon. Beluga Brody. Um, let's see, Jake, hello Jake, I'll, um, hello a real glitter boy, um, yeah it's dark because of that but I also had, I have a light that's right beneath the camera that I didn't even turn on, <laughs> I was like, something seems different about today, um, let's see, but I think the feed should be looking fine. Um, yeah, I have to cut the sandwich. Uh, this is preheating. That's really hot. Um, Maggie says, hi, I'm eating lunch while with sliced chicken with meatballs and potato salad. Awesome. All right, you guys are going to watch me cut this sandwich here. So let me turn the camera so you can look down this way. I have some junk on the counter. Junk mail, of course. Uh, this is extra water, which I don't need. Cutting board. I had so little time to cool the sandwich, I actually stuck it in the freezer, which works really well, as long as you don't forget that it's in there. So... Let's see. Cooling the sandwich is absolutely necessary for cutting it. So, with a bread knife, you do long sawing strokes, not short little strokes. You do long sawing strokes. That's how you get a clean cut with a bread knife. set this down on the lunch plate. There we go. 
And then I'll eat those those sandwich ends later. So let's see. I can never replicate the exact angle I shoot this thing at. I want to get the the tea, but I also want to get the poster because that's kind of like what this whole thing is about. All right, so now it is time for dumping out the water. So there, the china was preheating with half hot tap water and half boiling water. yet to have the money to buy an electric kettle, so it's just using a pot right now. I think that's okay. This I can dump a little more. I don't want the tea cup with perfectly boiling water, I just want it to be hot. Black teas, they they uh, steep at about uh, 200 degrees, just about, maybe a few degrees more or less. I know that as soon as I pour the boiling water into the pot, it starts cooling almost down to 190 within a few, within a few uh, seconds. So, what time is it? It is 4.9, so 4.14. I have to check to make sure that that uh, the tea is ready then. So, okay, let's see who's here. Um, Beluga asks, what if Titana was a Cunard liner? Cunard ships had the IA. So maybe Titania? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Titania. Um, funny enough, I once knew someone named... Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. Her name was Tatiana, but everyone called her Titania. That's why I'm, I'm remembering her wrong. But everyone called her Titania. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Maggie says, hi, I'm eating lunch while... Sliced chicken with sliced chicken breast meatballs, potato salad. Awesome. I think I already read that one. Um, Janine says hello, hello. Um, Maggie says if you had an option to eat one thing every day, would it be Scottish shortbread or digestives? <sighs> Scottish shortbread. The digestives are really good, but the Scottish shortbread is better. <laughs> so I would choose to eat the Scottish shortbread every day. Um, hello, Eric. How you doing? Thanks for joining me on this tea time. Linda, hello. Happy tea time. Glenn, hello. Uh, Glenn asks, what is your thoughts on the new Cunarder Queen Anne? Um, it looks pretty good. So I I'm not a fan of cruise ships. Um, so... Uh, I do like um, I do like ocean liners, and the last uh, ocean liner to really be in operation currently is the uh, Queen Mary II, and so I do like the Queen Mary II specifically because it's an ocean liner and it does things that cruise ships can't. Cruise ships to me look like like a lot of people described it as like if a hotel building was, like, floating on its side. And that's kind of what, like... Yeah, that's kind of... That's kind of what cruise ships look like to me. They don't look like ships. They just look like a big floating layered thing. Uh, but what I do like about Cunard cruise ships is that they're very dignified. You know, like, there's some cruise ship lines out there that are really goofy-looking. And I, I just couldn't see myself boarding one of those ships. But Cunard ships are generally really beautiful on the inside especially. Um, and they're just very dignified. That's, if I were to be a person who takes cruises, it would be on Cunard. Or maybe even something more fancy like, uh, 
like uh, Norwegian. Is, is Norwegian wine fancy? It's fancy, isn't it? Or there? No, I'm thinking of something else. There's a really fancy cruise line out there. But anyway, my point is, is that I like the more dignified stuff. I don't want to feel like I'm at a circus on water. So you know. Um, but it, but yeah, I do think the Queen Anne looks really beautiful on the inside. When it comes to cruise ships, I still prefer the Queen Mary too. So. Um, Haley asks, do you prefer when Disney characters walked around or meet and greet and, at Disneyland? Um, they don't do that anymore, do they, huh? Because of the, the corona thing, the, the COVID thing. So, yeah, I thought it was really cool when characters would walk around and meet and greet with people. It was really an interesting experience, you know, like, and I grew up going to Disneyland all the time, and that's that's how you met characters, was they walked around. So it's weird to think, like, you have to see them from behind a fence, and they just kind of stand there, like, you know, it's just weird. It's a weird thought. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Glenn asks, will you be watching the unveiling of the Queen Anne later this week? Is it later this week? Could you tell me when? Because I might watch it. Um, so if you could tell me when and how I can see it, keep in mind I'm on the Pacific coast. I'm in the Pacific, uh, timeline of the United States. Um, so let's see. Madeline says, Alex, I want your sandwich so bad. You know, these sandwiches are so good. I thought, I thought like, oh, you know, when I do this tea time thing, like I'm always going to be rotating to different sandwiches. But I ended up liking this one so much more. But what I have to find, and guys, maybe you can help me. I want to find an authentic British tea sandwich uh, that I could try. Because what I've had so far was I've had the cucumber tea sandwich, and I've had the egg salad tea sandwich. The egg salad one is good, um, but it's just not as good as the cucumber. Not nearly. Um, and it takes a bit longer to make. The cucumber sandwich is really fast. But I would like to try other ones. But those are the only two I've heard of. So if you know of another one that's, like, really good, that everybody loves, um, and it's a tea sandwich, then i like to try that. And then, of course, when I have more money, I'm also going to try to make some pastries, like British scones. Um, scones are different than scones. Uh, not a lot of people know that. Especially some British people don't know that. But uh, American scones are, are like, really hard and crumbly. Like, they, like you bite into them and, and they just fall apart. And they're designed so you have to soak them in something. Or you take a bite and then you take a sip of coffee or something. Because they're, so, they're usually very dry and crumbly. Um, whereas British scones are generally, like, they are have they have a slight crispness on the outside, but further in, it's usually a bit more cakey. Not quite, but it's still somewhat dense and stuff. But, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's hard to describe a British scone. But, so there is a difference between, Brit between American scones and British scones. And so I would like to make British scones. I used to make them at my cafe, Ironically, most of the Americans that ate it didn't understand it. They were like, oh, this is great. I used to make, I used to serve it with uh, clotted cream, the, the scones. So I'd make clotted cream, serve that to the customers, and they were like, what is this? And I'm like, oh boy. So, <laughs> so I would, I would do that. Um, I have the ability to make that. Um, yeah, so let me know. Um... Good, I'm glad you're doing good, Eric. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, the the Queen Queen Anne looks a bit top heavy. <laughs> Matthew says, now I know to look out for Scottish shortbread next time in the grocery store. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of American, like big American stores, would have it. It's pretty popular. Um, thank you, Tinker. Um, yeah, Celebrity Cruise Line is beautifully innovative. Uh, Dwight asks, what's your favorite ocean liner? He says, my favorite is Queen Mary. Mine, my favorite is also the original Queen Mary. 
So, that's my favorite ocean liner. Thomas asks, what do you th what time did it, oh jeez, I haven't been paying attention. Normally I like stir this around in there, but I I like oversteeped it so it would be super like yeah, so I'm not stirring it in, I'm just There we go. Gosh, I feel like terrible now. I really should start a timer. Cause usually I just look at the clock and I'm like, okay, you know, five minutes have passed, that's perfect. Uh but I went over the time this time. By like Three minutes. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, um... Maggie asks, do you mean the Ida cruises with the ship that has lipstick painted on the eyes? No. I would never get on a ship that looks like that. No. No, I'm talking like the real luxury, like, you have to be like a person who earns like hundreds of thousands of dollars or pounds a year. Yeah. Yeah. Even millions. But, um, let's see. Mateo. Hey, Mateo. How you doing? NCC638 says, do you like the name Queen Anne or would you have picked something else? Um, so, I know, you know, uh, Queen Anne and, well, I, I didn't know her person. I mean, the, I know of Queen Anne and I have, you know, I understand why they picked Queen Anne. However, if you notice, the other queen ships are named after British queens from a certain era. So, essentially, British queens that have lived in the 1900s. So, you know, even Queen Victoria, you know, she died in 1901. So, technically, she was in the 1900s at some point. But... So far, all their queen ships have been from the 19... Uh, from Named after queens who lived in the 1900s at some point. And I thought, well, there is one more queen, uh, British queen, that they haven't used the name of yet. And so I was literally thinking that's the one that they were going to choose. Can anyone guess, especially you British folks out there, can you guess which queen uh, I'm referring to? Because they've already used... Queen Victoria, uh, Queen Mary, uh, they've used uh, Queen Elizabeth, and technically Queen Elizabeth again, but it's hard to say. The first, the first Queen Elizabeth ship was technically named after the Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, and the second Queen Elizabeth ship was technically named after Queen Elizabeth II. Um, but there is one more queen. British Queen from 1900s that they haven't used yet for Cunard. So if anyone can answer that, that's the one that uh, that I would have said, oh, they should name it after this queen. So, let's see. Today, by the way, is Irish breakfast tea. Boy, I brewed that strong, but I'm sure the Irish do too. So, when in Rome... Let's see here. Jennifer. <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. No, I already mentioned Victoria. So they, they've they already used Queen Victoria, Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, and Queen Elizabeth the Second. But there's one more queen that they haven't used to name their ship. British Queen, by the way, British Queen, from the 1900s. So same time period, same era. I'll answer it in a second if nobody gets it. No, Queen Anne was not from the 1900s. Queen Anne was, I think, from the 1700s? So possibly 1600s. I don't know that much about Queen Anne, but... But no, I'm talking about 1900s era, because Cunard, their queen ships are all named after British queens, literally, from the 1900s. So I thought, well, there's one more queen that they would have named it after, but they didn't. So I'm like, which one is it? 
Queen Princess McGur... Mer... Mer... I never heard of her. All right, you guys, I'll just answer it for you. Queen Alexandra, the consort of King Edward the Seventh. So King Edward the Seventh was the son of Queen Victoria. He was the one that became king after Queen Victoria died in 1901. And King Edward lasted about 10 years um, until uh, he died in 1911, and his son, King George V, took over. So anyway, King Edward VII's wife was Queen Alexandra. And so I thought, I'm like, well, she's the last queen. Queen Alexandra is the last queen from the group of queens who lived in the 1900s that were British. And I thought they would have named the Queen Anne ship after Queen Alexandra. But instead of doing that, because she was a respectable queen, by the way, Queen Alexandra, she was a respectable queen. So there's no reason why they wouldn't have chosen her, I don't think. But they just chose Queen Anne, I think, because everybody knows Queen Anne more than Queen Alexandra. So, Matthew says Maggie got that one. Oh, yeah, Maggie did get that one. Yeah, Queen Alexandra, you got it right, Maggie. So, yeah, so, no, you guys, Queen Anne is the name that they did choose. Queen Alexandra is the name that I thought they would choose because it made more sense because all their queenships are, are named after queens that lived in the 1900s. So... <laughs> no, I don't I don't think there'll be a Queen Mary 3 anytime soon. Uh so, but yeah, I was really surprised. I was like, you know, I I had just watched a documentary about Queen Alexandra, and so I thought, wow, this is a really respectable lady uh that um that I'm sure the 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 fourth Kennard ship would be named after. Um or named, yeah, named after. But they didn't choose Queen Alexandra. They skipped like 200 years, almost 300 years, and they just went to, to Queen Anne. And I was just like, okay, well, I mean, she was a good queen as well, but still, didn't make sense to me. Um, all right, so, tea sandwich. Maggie asks, what's your thoughts about the name Queen Berengaria? Queen Berengaria. I guess that works. Was there a Queen Berengaria? This is so good. The real cream cheese is what makes it. Oh, okay, so... RG asks, Alex, if you were a billionaire, would the would the first thing you do is build the Queen Mary 3? No, because there's already a Queen Mary 2, so there's no need to have a Queen Mary 3 until that one's gone. Um, I'd probably build another ocean liner and I'd name it Queen Alexandra. <laughs> I'd have to get special permission from from the crown, you know, from, from uh, Queen Elizabeth or whoever succeeds her. So... I guess that would be Prince Charles would succeed her. But um, I'd have to get permission from the monarch to use that name. But that's what I'd do. If I was a billionaire and I wanted to build an ocean liner, I would name it Queen Alexandra since no one's taken that name yet. Savannah says Queen Berengary was Queen Mary's successor to the throne. Queen Mary of, of what? Of, not of Britain. It had to be a different country. Germany, perhaps? I'm trying to think. There's been other, there's been other um, European countries that have had a Queen Mary before. But not, uh, Britain, as far as I know, unless Queen Mary of Scots or... I don't know. This is boggling my mind. Um, wow. 
way. Uh, Matthew says they couldn't build a Queen Diana, alas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Drake asks, what are the ingredients of those tea sandwiches? So, um, the spread is made of uh, two parts cream cheese to one part mayonnaise, and then it's seasoned with garlic powder, salt, and then there's it's been all mixed together with freshly chopped dill. So, chopped fresh dill, I should say. And then you layer just slices of cucumber on it. Many people automatically do the circles. They slice the cucumber into circles. I don't do that for sandwiches because they easily fall out. What I do is I, I will cut the cucumber lengthwise into planks, and then I lay those on. Um, so, yeah, it's faster a little bit, and it helps keep the sandwich in even shape, because when you try to lay circles everywhere, it makes the sandwich all lumpy and weird, so I try not to do that, but... Hello, Tyler. Um, oh, you watched Death on the Nile? Cool. Savannah asks, Alice, what would you say to Queen Mary if you could, if you had the opportunity to meet her? Well, I mean, that depends which Queen Mary it is, because you were earlier saying something about a Queen Mary who had a daughter, Baron Garia. But I'm thinking um, Queen Mary, who was once known as Mary of Tech, the consort of King George V. If I met her, I, I would just say it's a, you know, pleasure to meet you, um... I don't think she was referred to as Your Majesty. She probably would have... No, no, she was Your Majesty. She was Your Majesty. So I would say, I'd pleasure to meet you, Your Majesty, or something, but their royal protocol would dictate that I can't really say too much. Um, I would just thank, thank her for certain things that she had done in her career as... Well, not career, but her duty. Uh, that kind of thing, and... Yeah. I heard, though, that she didn't really take well to compliments. So it'd be hard to compliment her because <laughs> she'd probably just walk away at that point. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I don't like meeting my heroes, to be honest. Well, I wouldn't really consider Queen Mary my hero. Really, if anything, it would be Queen Elizabeth II. That I have so much respect for that lady. But if I ever met Queen Elizabeth II, which I wish I could, um, I really wish I could, um, I wouldn't know what to say to her, except just, you know, thank you for being such an inspiration to me my whole life, you know? So, it's really cool. So, let me see here. Um, Dwight says, do you know High Seas is about the Queen Mary? It's not. High Seas is not about the Queen Mary. They use a, the digital image of the ship from way in the distance looks similar to Queen Mary. But the ship isn't necessarily about Queen Mary. I mean, the, the, the show, I mean, the show isn't about the, the Queen Mary ship. I thought it was. That's why I started watching it. And then I noticed nothing was filmed on the Queen Mary. Absolutely nothing of that show was filmed on the Queen Mary. All of it was completely different sets. The sets don't even look like places on the Queen Mary. They look very 100% different. Um, so I was really disappointed because that's really mainly the reason why I was watching that show. And the show, I couldn't get into it itself. I tried because I did like the idea of an Art Deco liner that they're on, but I couldn't get into it. I was like, this is... I don't know, they really dialed up the soap opera, you know, method of it but um savannah says of portugal so queen mary of portugal had uh had a daughter queen berengaria is that is that it 
Scotland, and Scotland was the same person who married in. I'm just, I, this is so confusing to me. Um, Maggie says, SS Imperator after World War I was given to Cunard and was renamed Berengaria, which was the Queen of England. I gotta look this up somehow. I never knew that one of the queens of England was named Berengaria. I know that Cunard acquired a ship that, you know, the, the Imperator, that they renamed Berengaria. That I understand, but I did not know that there was a Queen of England named Queen Berengaria, or that she was at all related to any of the Queen Marys that was in Britain. I'll have to look this up. I can't do it right now because I'm using my phone to answer everybody's questions, and my computer is like 15 feet over there, so... Um, Uh, let's see. Savannah says, is this your only meal of the day? No. No, I would not be able to survive off of sweets and a single sandwich. <laughs> no. Um, this is... Uh, afternoon tea is supposed to be treated like a lunch break. So you have something that is somewhat of a light meal for afternoon tea. And then... Um, and then for uh, for high tea, which you don't usually have high tea and afternoon tea on the same day, not generally, but for high tea, that acts like a dinner. But I don't have high tea. It's just too much stuff to make just for myself. Um, but I have afternoon tea as kind of like a late afternoon break from working. Like I was working all day, all morning on my next video. So this is my break from that video. Mm. RG asks, have you thought about becoming a chef on the Queen Mary 2? No, because I can't work as a chef anymore because of my schizophrenia. So I can't do that job anymore. Um... Linda says, I would love to make cucumber sandwiches. I had a line in a play about cucumber sandwiches years ago, and I've been interested in them ever since. You should. They're really easy. It's just cream cheese, mayonnaise, cucumbers, fresh dill, garlic powder, and salt. And, of course, the bread. Usually you're supposed to choose a thin sliced bread. Some people like white bread. I prefer multi-grain breads. Um... So mine is a multigrain. Mm. Savannah asks, is it appropriate to, cur to curtsy and bow to Queen Mary? Yes. Um... Women would, would do a, a small curtsy, and then men would do a neck bow. Mm. Matthew Richards says, the ship featured in High Seas the Altamar, is heavily inspired by Queen Mary. The the fictional ship on the show? Um, yeah, I know. It's heavily inspired by Queen Mary on the outside, but on the inside, nothing looks at all similar to Queen Mary. Did they use Art Deco? Yeah. Did Queen Mary have Art Deco? Yes. So maybe the inside is inspired because Queen Mary used Art Deco, but I looked at all... I watched the show. I watched several episodes before I quit, Every scene that they were in did not look at all like anything that was on the Queen Mary. So I I can't say the inside of the ship was definitely inspired by the Queen Mary because it, none of it looked at all like the Queen Mary. Um, but uh, but I do but yeah they did use Art Deco as their style like Queen Mary did. 
they chose a very, like, French-looking Art Deco, which means that it's very, like, in-your-face Art Deco. Maybe they chose a... Maybe they actually chose a Spanish version of Art Deco, because every country had their own version of Art Deco, so maybe they chose a Spanish version of Art Deco, but... Um, but then the outside of the ship... Yeah, the outside of the ship looks like the Queen Mary to a certain degree. Um... They only used one image of the actual Queen Mary so far, and that was in the first episode when everybody was boarding the ship. They took a very far away photograph of the original Queen Mary, and they doctored it up a little bit to look like the Altamar, and then they put that like in the background of the show. So I got like all excited thinking, oh, well, I'm going to see like images of the Queen Mary on the show, and then that was it. That was it for the rest of the show. No more images of Queen Mary. good tea um glenn says the uk government wants to build a new royal yacht slash state yacht they propose to name it after the late prince philip but queen elizabeth declined this well i didn't know that the uk wanted to build another another yacht because i know all about the royal yacht britannia and how important it was for um for the state you know um it's funny because a lot of people before that, before the Royal Yacht retired, they were like, oh, you know, the Royal Family should get rid of it. They don't need a yacht. And it's, it's difficult because it's hard to explain to people how a yacht could be useful to the government. And it's like, because it's called a yacht. So automatically you think party animal, you know, like you're like, oh, someone's going to party on this boat and we don't want the royals to party course they do hold some things on there but generally the yachts were used for you know for state purposes but yeah so they do need another royal yacht they really do um but uh yeah i didn't know uh tell me more glenn if you know uh so do they still plan on at least making one and then maybe they'll name it something else um yeah that would be so cool they need another another yacht So Anna says, Alex, have you counted your record for saying Queen Mary in one day, and what, what is it? I've never counted. Um, I think I say it so much in one day that uh, I don't even want to know. If I, had to, if I had to count it, it would probably be in the hundreds of how many times I see I say Queen Mary in one day. I've had to get used to saying it really fast, like Queen Mary, you know, or the Mary. The Mary is easier to say. Um, Maggie says the Ocean Liner era was from 1840 to 18 or 1980 to 1840 to 1987 uh, here in the U.S. Pacific, but because Hawaiian Islands couldn't get to get to by air until 1990s. Ocean Liner era. I mean, yeah, it really depends on how you say it, but. The so there's there's an era called the golden age of travel, and it goes from the 1900s through. Some would argue just before the war. Others would try to argue just after the war, just because they want to see the SS United States listed as part of the golden age of travel. Um, but to be honest, not many people traveled as much after the war. Or at least not just after the war. Um, they started traveling a lot more in the 50s, but, but yeah, so, yeah. It's hard to say. Whenever you, like, try to list a golden age, someone else comes up with a different number. They're like, oh, it was actually from this time to this time, and, and then it just becomes, like, one of those things where it's, like, becomes a matter of opinion. So it's hard to say, but... Marjorie says, Alex, who are your favorite sports teams and why? I don't have any. I don't like sports. I don't understand sports. I don't understand why people watch sports. <laughs> so I, I don't have a favorite sports team. Um, let's see. Hello, Restore the Queen. Thank you so much. Uh, Tyler says, Baron Garia was the wife of King Richard, the Lionhearted. Oh, okay. 
Uh, Maggie says, Berengaria of Navarre, Queen of England and wife of King Richard I of England. Oh, okay. I had no idea about that. Uh, Park Hopper says, okay, what would you say would make the best meal at Disneyland? Pairing with tea. Also, any good tea at Disneyland? No, there's no good tea at Disneyland. Um, what would make the best meal at Disneyland that goes with tea? Hmm. Best meal at Disneyland that goes with tea. I don't know. It's not... American restaurants are not designed around tea service. So tea service is very specific foods, stuff that is specifically designed to go with tea. And Disneyland doesn't do that. Most of the time, if you try to buy tea at Disneyland, they're going to refer you to some kind of, like, hot, like, Lipton tea or something. I don't think it's Lipton anymore. It's some other company. But they'll refer you to some cheap American tea company. Savannah says, Alex, consider Disney vlogging. A lot have become millionaires. <laughs> no, they haven't. Um, I used to be a Disneyland vlogger. For three years, I did vlogging at Disneyland. I did it every week for three years on this channel. And, um, and it was never as popular as my history series. Um... And it was really expensive to do, um, but there are no Disney vloggers that are millionaires. They, as far as I know, even the most well-to-do Disney vloggers still require a day job because it's, they still can't last off of it. So I used to be in that crowd, the Disney vloggers, so I knew a lot of them. If not by friendship, then by by some kind of association. Um, but the problem is that it's oversaturated. The reason why I stopped doing it, well, it had to do with the pandemic, but, but after the pandemic, I decided I didn't want to do it anymore because it's oversaturated. That everyone is a Disney blogger now, or vlogger now. And because of that, like, it's just not worth it. No one's no one's going to be watching Alex the Historian when they could be watching, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, super hot Disney fan guy who goes to Disneyland and eats food. I don't know. So, yeah, it's like, you know, that's kind of the problem I had with my vlogs anyway, was that people would come to my vlogs and they'd be like, oh... I didn't know what it was like, but I try to do something different in my vlogs. So my vlogs told history. So I'd walk around the park and I'd show people things that they'd never seen before. I'd tell them things that they'd never heard before. And so my vlogs were like structured. So you knew you were going to get three fun facts plus like some other interesting things. Like I had a segment called What's Behind That Door? And I'd take you to a door somewhere in Disneyland, any door, and I could tell you what's behind it, because I've pretty much been everywhere in backstage at Disneyland and stuff, so I know where everything is. Um, so I used to do stuff like that, and I thought it was a good idea, but it it wasn't that popular. I had maybe 1,000, maybe 2,000 views from it, but not that much. So people really just wanted the history stuff, not not the vlogs, so...
Um, hello, Mike. Glad to see you. Um, Park Hopper says, I'm eating Tillamook Rocky Road ice cream. It's delicious. You know? <laughs> so Tillamook is an organ company because, you know, they're based out of Tillamook, Oregon. And ever since I moved up here to Portland and, and I've, I, I've, I've, I've loved all the food and the companies that make food here because I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but Oregon does food better. Even their farms, like whenever we buy produce, it's always like way more beautiful than the stuff I would see at stores in California. Like, like I remember the first time I bought a um, butternut squash here. I cut it open at, at home, and I was, like, getting ready to cook it. I cut it open, and it was the most vibrant orange on the inside. It was a beautiful orange. I'd never seen that in my life. I, and I've been, I, you know, had butternut squash my whole life. And it was, in the, but, but they were always so dull looking in California. And it was just so vibrant and so tasty here. And, but back to Tillamook. They make really good cheeses, really good butter, really good ice creams, and it's amazing. And my favorite bread, uh, like my favorite like loaves of bread that I buy at the store, is Famous Dave's. No, not Famous Dave's. That's a barbecue place. No, is um, Dave's Killer. So Dave's Killer bread uh, is based here in the Portland area. So they just do food better here. It's crazy. Um, let's see. Um, Maggie says the U.S. version of Art Deco is way too similar to the U.K. version. Yeah, um, I mean, that's because our, our, our two societies have always, well, at least in, at least in the late 1800s, all the way through the 1900s, we've always, like, based our American architecture and styles off of stuff we had seen in Britain. So if Britain was doing Art Deco, we wanted to do it just like them. And there's literally, I watched a, a video about how, like, we literally would replicate stuff that was British Art Deco for here and do it cheaper. And, um, because Art Deco wouldn't have caught on here in the United States if it wasn't for our, or at least Art Deco stuff you can buy, household items, wouldn't have caught on here in the United States if it couldn't have been produced for cheaper than it was done overseas. And so we managed to take, like, we would, like, take, like, a dresser with, like, drawers and everything, and and we would, like, l study it, how, like, the Britons did it, and then we would do it cheaper here. And so, yeah, it was pretty interesting. But, yeah, American Art Deco looks very similar to British Art Deco, and Art Deco originated in France. And I can appreciate French Art Deco, but I prefer British Art Deco because there's something more like, they took it from being overly weird that like the French did, I'm, I mean weird in a good way, weird in a quirky way. So the French did, did the Art Deco in a quirky, weird way. And the British went, let's step it back a bit and do something more um, I don't know, more grounded, more real. And so they, they, so while the French were doing styles that had to do with metal and marble and stuff like that, the British were doing stuff with wood. And so the British Art Deco stuff generally has more wood features in it. And I think, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. So that's why when people go like, oh, well, the SS Normandy was the perfect example of Art Deco, I go, it's the perfect example of French Art Deco. But Queen Mary was the perfect example of British Art Deco. And I prefer British Art Deco. It's less flashy and more real and more grounded and more organic looking. I like it so much better than, than the cold materials used on Normandy.
gives me like cold shivers just thinking about the SS Normandy. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Haley says, what is the worst movie you have ever seen? I mean, I've seen some pretty cruddy, like, independent films. But I guess when it comes to, like, a famous film... What's the worst famous film I've ever seen? <laughs> the worst famous blockbuster film I've ever seen... Gosh, there's a huge tie. There's a tie between four movies. Um, the Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, uh, Jurassic World 1 and Jurassic World 2. Actually, all three of the new trilogy of Star Wars. The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and then there's a third one. Rise of Skywalker. Those three, in my opinion, are absolutely terribly made movies. Um, and then, the, so far, the two Jurassic World movies, I think those are terrible as well. Those are the worst blockbuster movies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Um, let's see. Tyler says, Alex, you don't believe this, but I am the sixth cousin of Queen Elizabeth II, according to my aunt's research. Wow. You might be uh, entitled to some kind of dukedom or something. You never know. Bridevale says, did you watch the 2012 short series Titanic? What are your thoughts uh, if you have any. I think I did, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. Because I remember in 2012, there was a lot of different, like, Titanic stuff coming out on TV, and I was watching it all, but I don't remember. I don't remember. Um... Len says, the Royal Yacht Britannia is one of the most visited attractions in Scotland. She is one of the favorite places to visit. I really hope you get to visit her. I would love to. I, I was talking to my friend, I think, yesterday or the day before yesterday about it. Because me and my friend Chris are planning to eventually um, visit the UK. And I, w I said, look, I said, what are the chances we could go visit the Royal Yacht? And But it's all the way in Edinburgh. So... It's too far. The farthest north we're going is London, honestly. Um, the farthest west we're going is um, is uh, Bristol. So I think we're. I think there's only three cities we plan, or three main areas, I should say, because there's probably cities within those areas. But three main areas we plan to be in the UK, or at least in in the, the, the main UK mainland, I should say, uh, is Bristol, London, and Southampton. Um, and then the other part of the UK we plan to visit is Northern Ireland to see Belfast and see the Titanic Museum. But but we, we can't go to Edinburgh. It's just not... It's not... Which I would love to, because Edinburgh is a beautiful city. And there's so much history there. I would love to film that. But, uh, but yeah, we... Our itinerary doesn't bring us that far up, and um, and we still have plans to go to France, uh, to to Paris, and to and to see Disneyland Paris as well. So, our itinerary is booked for it. What's crazy is it's going to be a really long vacation because we plan to take the Queen Mary transatlantic crossing. Um, and the crossing is eight days. And um, so it's eight days there. 
and then we have to be that we have to be there for two weeks because we can't just get back on the ship and leave because it leaves in 12 out 12 hours after it arrives so we actually have to wait two weeks for it to come back and so um so we literally have about four 14 16 days i forget what it is i think it's 16 days we have 16 days in the europe area and um and 16 days is a long time, but I wanted to spend like four days in London, honestly, because there's so much in the London area that I want to film. Uh, so, yeah, we have our whole itinerary kind of worked out, like what we want. I've got to work really hard this year to save up money for that, because at the moment I don't have a dollar to put towards that trip, but I have to work really hard this whole year to save up for that. But um, we'll see. I'd love to do that. And I, I want to live stream everywhere I go so you guys can see what I'm seeing live. Um, let's see. Uh, Linda says, we have a tea restaurant in the San Jose area that serves high tea. I've been there twice now for birthday celebrations. It's awesome. It's called Lisa's Tea Treasures. Oh, awesome. Glenn says, the government still wants to build a yacht, but sadly, most people oppose the idea and say it's a government vanity gift, but PM Boris is fighting for one. Some stunning designs have been submitted. Oh. Yeah, I know that... Uh, yeah, I know people people think it's a it's a vanity gift, but... It, it is necessary for the state to run certain operations. They're, they're a monarchy, so the monarchy needs certain things to keep running. Yeah, they do, they do need another royal yacht, but it's hard to convince people because people are like, they, they assume a yacht is a, part, is a place to party. They don't assume a yacht could be something that, that like you know, royals can use and that, you know, the heads of state of the, of the state can use to get places and, you know, access things. But, um, Linda says, I enjoyed your Disney vlogs, but I really love your history videos better. All of your history videos, Disney trains, ships are wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I try really hard on those videos, so. <sighs> Savannah says, since the parks reopened, there's been a big resurgence in Disney vloggers making more money than ever. Yeah, they have been making more money than ever, but they're not millionaires. I can tell you that. You know, I've, I've got friends who they get you know, hundreds of thousands of views on their vlogs, but it still doesn't make them rich, you know. They they get a lot of money, though. They have a lot more than I got, that's for sure. But, but yeah, there's been a big resurgence, but that's the problem, is, is when you overload a subject with multiple people producing stuff for that same subject, less people watch. I know because my history, my Disney history videos used to be really popular. Like, I once put out... A long time ago, not the new one, but I once put out a video about Walt Disney's private apartment. Within a month, it got 160,000 views. It was popular, but as the years went on, more and more and more people joined the Disney, like, YouTube, and they were producing content. And I got less and less and less views because the market for, for stuff was oversaturated. So people today, they ask me, why don't you produce more Disney stuff? And I said, because literally it doesn't make me money. Less people are watching Disney content now because there's so much Disney vloggers out there. Like, it's there is a fine balance where if you have a certain growth of, of Disney YouTubers, then there will be a certain growth of viewing. But when you have way too many Disney YouTubers producing content, for a certain amount of people that have only so much time to watch that stuff in a day, then you get a problem of you get less views. Only the most popular people survive. I'm not among the most popular YouTubers. So it was literally, I was literally getting less and less views 
I would put out like a Disney history video and it would get like a thousand views, which is terrible for my channel. So I wouldn't make any money off of it. I would spend a whole week producing the video, you know, 40, 50 hours a day producing the video and then we get a thousand views and I'd get like $2 back. And I'm like, that was a waste of time. So that's why like people are like, well, why don't you produce more Disney content? Well, because nobody's watching it. If I would do more if people watched it. So I do Ocean Liner stuff because I get more views that way. And I'm trying to branch out to other things. So I've got stuff like the Spruce Goose and a railroad and stuff like that that I want to do. I've got stuff lined up that I want to try to branch out to get more of an audience. So that's why. But the Disney, the Disney content is oversaturated. Let's see. I'm gonna refill my tea. I'm trying to drink it before it it gets too cold. To be honest, I kind of like the Ocean Liner community a bit more now, though, because the Disney community has changed. A lot of people will probably agree. If you like, if you're a Disney fan and you've been a Disney fan for years and you've been following, you know, Disney vlogs and news outlets and stuff. You've probably noticed the change as well. People today are more complacent or more opinionated, like strongly opinionated. So that probably also has to do with our society becoming more divided. But um, but it's the same way at the at the Disney level because the Disney fans now they're like you either love the new stuff Disney's doing or you hate it, and it's like well you know it doesn't have to be that way, but. Nevertheless, it's become a really, I hate to put it this way, you guys, but, you know, the Disney content has become a really toxic place. And I, I tried to, to make it a place that was still welcoming and happy, but there were so many people who tried to ruin it for all of you guys. People who were trying to shut me down, you know, and all because they didn't, they didn't like my facts, or they thought my facts were were incorrect, or stuff like that, and it became harder and harder to make videos, and, you know, and so it was just like, it was a really toxic environment, so as soon as I switched to doing Queen Mary and Ocean Liners and stuff, I found a group of people out there that reminded me the, of the early days of being a Disney fan, when people still appreciated the content and still appreciated anyone who made content on this stuff, because there's still, like, a whole frontier of, like, ocean liners that people haven't covered in videos yet. And I plan to, like, dig deep in there and, like, make videos about that stuff. So, um, let's see. I have to catch up. I'm really behind on all these. I'm, like, 10 minutes, 16 minutes behind on all these comments. Um... Uh, yeah, I like Resort TV One. They're a really great channel. Um, I've I've had like a conversation or two with them here. They're really nice people. Um, Tinker says you are among my favorite Disneyland vloggers. Love your low key energy and great information. Thank you so much. Um, Park Hopper says, honestly, I'm here today because your Disney was the best. I'm not into tea. I'm into your personality. Also, it was obvious your knowledge was the best. Thank you so much. You know, actually, speaking of of that, so. I'm currently, so, I don't know if you guys know this, but my channel, I have a membership service on my channel where you pay a, you, you pay for one of three tiers and you get content in, 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 you know, back. That's one of the ways that I make money to make more content, because believe it or not, it costs money to make YouTube content. But that's one of the ways I do it, so, um, but I will also be adding a Patreon. So I have a Patreon currently. Uh, problem is, is that uh, at, at the moment I'm still fleshing out the details of how it will work, but essentially I have a private Discord server. Discord, for those who don't know, is like, is like a modern day version of a chat room, except it's private, so it's just me and people who pay for it. And so, and so with the Patreon and with the channel membership, um, a certain tier of that membership 
uh, will get you access to the Discord server, which means you can directly talk to me on Discord. You know, we can type back and forth. You can talk to other people who are part of the Discord and stuff like that. I'm still fleshing out all the details currently. Um, but it will be a way for you to be able to to uh, do that. So if you join the YouTube service, like let's just say right now you joined the YouTube membership, uh, the Discord thing is currently not listed on the archivist tiers, that there's two archivist tiers. So it's not listed on there, but it will be. And so if you were to join today, I would eventually give everybody who's an archivist a link to the Discord server. Um, I think you would, I think you have to be though, I want to make it so you have to be a senior archivist to get the Discord server because currently the senior archivists already pay the most money for stuff and so, yeah. I don't want to flood the Discord server with people. I want it to be a, a small group as, as best as possible <laughs> so that way I can get to everybody's conversations and stuff. But yes, so if you want to support my channel, um, you can become a member of the YouTube channel by clicking join, which you should see a button below. If you don't, you can go to um, the, uh, I think in the description of this video is is a link for you to join the YouTube membership. Um, if you wanna do the Patreon uh, membership, I should have put a link down below as well for Patreon membership. And that will only get you certain things. Um, but the YouTube membership is honestly better for your money. But anyway, that is the thing. The money helps me to keep making stuff because it does cost a lot of money to make the content. So I would like to be able to travel places to shoot more footage to bring more content to you guys. Um, I was really lucky that my friends came to visit me uh, last week and we were able to go places here in Oregon that I could shoot footage and make videos for you guys um, but I'd like to do that more often you know all right so let's see Pookie Smoochie says my favorite memory was going to Disneyland with my grandfather and getting the VIP treatment we never had to wait in line for anything because besides the bathroom uh, the tour guide would give us park history yep that was a, that, I used to do that I was a, a tour guide at Disney so that was always really fun to have one-on-one -on -one with people um, mm, <laughs> Park Hopper says, I'm learning about art, history, tea, and being cultured. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> you know, I kind of like, you know, a little bit of cultured stuff. So I try to learn as much as I can and, and relay that, guys, to you because I get so excited about this stuff. Um... Maggie says, Essence Normandy was so heavy because of French Art Deco. Yeah, all the marble that they added to the ship. My gosh. Um, Armist Queen Mary says, I only watch your live streams because I'm bored. Thank you. <laughs> Makes me feel so much better. Um, <laughs> okay. Brian Vale says, there was a lot of Titanic stuff then. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thomas says, Alex, do you plan on going to the White Swan Hotel in Alnwick? I would love to do that, but it's not currently on my my itinerary because I would love to see that. Um, I would also love to see there's a restaurant somewhere that has the original paneling from the RMS Mauritania. So there's there's a restaurant, I want to say in Ireland somewhere, that has the paneling from the Olympic but then there's a restaurant somewhere in the mainland of the UK that ha that has the um, that has the paneling from Mauritania. I'd love to see both, but neither are on my itinerary. I just I can't travel those places. Um, Matthew Richards says I love Bristol. Never been there, but would love to visit. The Clifton Suspension Bridge is iconic. And I heard it was a fun city. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff for me and my friends to film there and. That way I can make more history videos for you guys. I'd love to film all that stuff. The UK is full of history. It's crazy. Um, and it's all history I like. It's all steam and iron and engineering history. I love that stuff. So, uh, Haley says, thoughts on Disney Plus and other streaming services? 
Um, I have Disney Plus. I have the bundle. I only watch Hulu and Disney Plus from it. Um, there's not enough stuff on Disney Plus that I watch. Uh, I just don't. There's just nothing. I don't have anything there that I watch. So I rarely watch Disney Plus, but I, I do keep it because I love having Hulu, and I have I watch so much stuff on Hulu. So, um, let's see. Uh... Savannah says resurgence is more people than ever tuning and wanting more Disney content. There aren't enough Disney vloggers to satisfy demand. I don't. I don't agree with that. I don't. I'm in that group of people who are Disney vloggers who've done that stuff. There's more than there is necessary. These people are are having a harder time getting to the top. I've talked to them. You know, they're, they complain. They're like, it's so hard to move up because not enough people are watching the videos. And I said, yeah, I know. I've, I'm in the same boat. You know, like, it's hard to move up because there's there's a group of people at the very top of the Disney vloggers who they get all the views, you know, and it's really hard to get up there. And so it's just like, it's, it's not, believe me, I'm telling you, I, I know this stuff. Like I said, my channel, it's Disney content is dying because no one's watching it, you know? So I had vlogs and everything. No one was watching those. It's just not, it's like no one. No one at the lower levels is getting the views they need. It's only the people at the very top who are getting all the views. So I've had so many people, like so many YouTubers, go on Twitter and, you know, they they are so upset because they're like, it's, it's so hard to move up in the vlogging community because it's so oversaturated. It's like, yeah, it is. It's really oversaturated, you know. So um, let's see. Yeah, one hour has gone by, Glenn. It's crazy. Um... <laughs> um, Joe B says hi Alex I'm a new subscriber to both your channels thanks for sharing your experience with us no problem um, I recently just posted on my second channel uh, it's a uh, it's kind of like a vlog of when I visited the the uh, Union Pacific big boy so you guys should check that out it's on the Alex Adner channel it's spelled A-D-N-E-R um, and on that channel will be a lot more stuff of, like, historical interests of mine. So that's what that channel's all about. Like, stuff about me and my historic interests. So, yeah, posted that the other day. And there's more videos to come. After I do this tea time, I have to go back and work on... Uh, I have to keep working on my video that I'm trying to get out by... I want to try to get it out by tomorrow on the Alex Historian channel. We'll see. <laughs> I need to get a video out tomorrow, and I'm rushing to get this one completed. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Tyler. You, Tyler says, you may not be the most popular, but you're the most intelligent. I love intelligent people. Oh, thank you so much. You know, there's people have, you know, there's there's content for... For pretty much any kind of thing you want to watch, you know, if you if you like someone who's really goofy and and fun and you know they don't get too serious, there's content for that. And then I'm one of the I'm one of the YouTubers who I like to get you know like into the details and into the nitty gritty of the stories and stuff like that. And so that's just kind of my thing. So yeah, every YouTuber has their own style. Matthew says, I hope to see more San Francisco history videos. Yeah, I have ideas for that, too. Like, one of the videos I want to make is the history of Golden Gate Park. It's got an interesting history. Um, but I'm worried no one would watch it because they'd be like, oh, who cares about Golden Gate Park's history? But that's kind of the problem I had when I did that when I did that one about Yerba Buena Cove. I was like, oh, this will be interesting, and then nobody watched it because they were like, oh, who cares about some lost harbor? Oh, it's so hard to predict what people are going to want to watch, you know? And I ask them, I say, what do you guys want to watch? And they're like, more Disney! And I'm like, no! If I make more Disney, no one will watch it. So, um... Uh, let's see. 
Thank you so much, Haley. You're one of the best Disney YouTubers, she says. Um, uh, Savannah says, can you say more on what was toxic about the Disney vloggers? No, because I've learned the hard way that that you can't you can't you can't speak your mind about people especially not about specific people um i'm one of those firm people that that believe that you should be able to speak your mind about somebody you know if someone if someone really doesn't like me then they have the right to say that they don't like me that's how i am but unfortunately the way society is now is if you speak your mind you get canceled so i don't talk anymore about about people so um Let's see. Jennifer says, is Oregon the best? Seems fun living there. Lots of nature. Yeah. Honestly, though, Oregon, mostly what they have is nature. You know, my friend came to visit, and he was really excited. And we did see some museums, but there's a very small list of things you can do in Oregon. Uh, unlike Southern California, where there's, like, hundreds of things you can do. In Oregon, there's not that much, and mostly it's nature. So mostly it's like there's different parks and things that you can visit with different landscapes, and that's the, that's the most of what you can do. So if you're not a nature person, Oregon doesn't have that much for you. You have to be a nature person. And I am a nature person to a certain degree. <laughs> um so I do love the nature here. Uh, I just don't go too deep into the forest because I'm afraid of getting lost. <laughs> the weirdest fears. Um, uh, Pookie Swishy says, we need to start a fundraiser to send you on the Queen Mary too. If I can't do it myself, I may as well help someone who can. Honestly, that would be so cool, but <laughs> please don't get me in trouble for creating a fundraiser. Um, but yeah, I would love to go on the Queen Mary too. Like I, it's my goal is my goal is, is winter, uh, like late winter. Okay. No, let me put it this way. November, December of 2023 is my goal for taking a trip to the UK aboard the Queen Mary two. That's my goal. And that means this whole year from now until December, I have to save up a lot of money to do that. Um, and so I, that means I've got to pump more videos out than ever this year and try to get the money to do that. Because the, the idea is it's not just a vacation. It's also a way for me to film history stuff for you guys in the future. There's so much history in the UK. It's unbelievable. I was able to walk around Portland the other week and, and film some historic places there that I can make videos out of, but... But as much of old stuff there is in Portland, there's not enough video content in Portland. I might be able to go to Seattle sometime and then do stuff there, but but still, there's a lot more stuff in the UK. Like, you walk around a corner and there's something I can film about history there. It's crazy how much history is there. So, so it's not just a vacation. It's a way to bring more content to the channel. So that's what I really want to do. Um... Jennifer's, can you, Jennifer says, can you see yourself living in the UK? Very cheap in many cities. I would love to live in the UK. You know, sometimes I feel like, like I actually belong in the UK more than I belong in the United States. I would love to live there, but unfortunately, you have to become a citizen and stuff like that, and becoming a citizen in the UK and living there permanently is really difficult to do. You have to have, like, a really good job uh, that will vouch for you and all that stuff so you can stay. If I was there, I would just be doing this. I'd be doing YouTube and making history videos, and that's, I don't think that that meets their criteria. But I would love to. There's so much history there. Mateo says, I loved your Yerbuena Cove video. Thank you. 
I thought it was a good video. Um, Wolf Gaming says, "What do you think of the design of the old QE2? I like the way the QE2, the way the QE2 looks from the outside, um, but the space age design from the inside was never my my thing. I like older stuff. I like Art Deco and and Edwardian styles and Victorian styles, not so much the space age styles." So I do like the way the QE2 looks from the outside. I actually plan to make a video about the history of the QE2, that kind of thing, but it's not my preferred ship. Um, oh, Linda says, I love the San Francisco history. I shared your cable car video on Facebook, and lots of folks liked it. That's good. Thank you so much for sharing that on Facebook. Um, yeah, I've always been, I've always wanted to make a video about the history of the cable cars, and I finally did it, and I was so excited. So it, it didn't get as many views as I had hoped, um, but who knows, maybe, maybe now that it's on Facebook or something, people will start watching and watching more of it. Mm. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. She says, I just got online, but totally agree that your intelligence is heads above the rest. A particular YouTube channel I watch now whines about magic key issues when I went. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm glad I, I haven't even tried it, the magic key thing. I'm glad I, 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 I don't, I'm not in that situation. So I prefer to I prefer to keep my content as positive as possible while still being real, so it helps if I don't have anything to complain about. <laughs> if I am given something to complain about, I just keep going on and on. But uh, Sarah also asks, did you see the smallest park in the world that's near the Saturday market area? You know, we tried looking for it. Um, maybe we didn't try that hard, but, but it was like we were walking down that street and I was like, oh, it's here somewhere. Wait, no, did we walk down that street? No. We were gonna. We were going to because, you know, that park that's along the Willamette River is, uh, there's there's a, a paddle wheeler, a steam paddle wheeler on that river. Um, it's, a, it's a maritime museum. We were gonna head there. And on the way there, is the smallest park in the United States. And I was going to visit it and, you know, make a short little video about it. Um, but while we were walking through the city, because we didn't have a car or anything, we literally walked through the city in the rain the whole day. It was like raining the whole day. And we walked through the city in the rain, filming various locations and things. And we were running out of time. We had lunch, and then we were like, you know, it's really rainy. It's getting cold. It's getting dark. You know, we gotta we gotta wrap this up. So we never even went to that area. We we ended up going up Broadway. We stepped into the Benson, did some filming. The Benson was so nice to us. They gave us like history papers, like 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 a like a history story that I could take with me that I could learn more about the hotel stuff that was not on the internet which I was so happy for like people of the Benson Hotel you know Hilton you know if you're if you're listening I don't know why you would be but thank you so much for for being so accommodating because I had the most minimal information on the Benson Hotel um, on the internet and by by just giving me that printout that you guys did oh my gosh that that will give me so much accurate information that i can tell the history of the hotel i'm going to try to avoid the the haunted stuff though because i don't i don't like making videos about haunted things i like to just talk about history so that's what i do so thank you benson hotel um <laughs> Well, Savannah, there is a lot to do here, but it's all nature. It's all nature stuff. There's tons of nature things to do, but not much 
tourist stuff to do. That's the thing. Sarah says, "Come to Tacoma. We'd be happy to give you ideas of what to come up, uh, what what to come up here. The glass museum. I still haven't gone to glass museum. What is that like? Is it like uh, like glassware, like cups and things, or um?" Jennifer says, Alex, if you fall in love in the UK and get married there, you can become a citizen. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, any, any handsome UK men want to give me a call? <laughs> that would be hilarious. Uh, Matthew says, Britain's version of HGTV is so much better, too. Love, Restoration Home, Restoration Man, the house at 100000 Pounds built. Nice. Um, you know what I think is cool about UK? They don't have commercials about medication. Oh my gosh. I was watching a show last night, and I had a, I had a commercial break every few minutes, and it was all medication commercials. I was like, you know, they don't have this in the UK. They don't get medication commercials. Like, I hate it. It's like a... It's like a, each commercial is like a minute long, and it talks about, you know, <laughs> about, like, your ear cancer and stuff. I'm like, I don't want to hear this. Like, you know, like, I know these medications are supposed to help you, but they actually bum me out. Like, oh, geez, I hope I don't get that, you know? Like, I always try to, like, I don't want to think about myself ever getting that sick, you know? Like, it, it doesn't help to to worry about that, you know? You have to deal with those things as they come. But, like, boy, it, it's hard to avoid that when you get so many medication commercials. It's crazy. Um, RG says, Alex, you have, to, you, you have a place to stay in Albuquerque. You should visit soon. Lots to do. I don't, I don't like deserts. I wouldn't go to Albuquerque. Um... Tyler, yeah, I deactivated some of my social media accounts, too. I just got tired of it. Like, I'm still on Facebook, but I, I don't, I'm not that active on Facebook, but I'm, I'm on Facebook, but I canceled, like, my Twitter and Instagram, and I was just like, I can't do this. It's too much craziness. Um, Maggie says, by the way, I'm designing my own ocean liner, not modern, but Queen Mary era, size between Queen Mary 1 and Armist Majestic slash X Bismarck, or parentheses X Bismarck. Nice. Will it be like Art Deco style, or will it be like a more Edwardian or something? Uh, Dwight says, I love tea time. Thank you so much. I do too. I love tea time. I gotta finish these pastries. Um... Sarah Palm says, yeah, the tiny park is near that park. Yeah. Thomas Burke says, Alex, how should I properly wash my Queen Mary China? Good question. When you wash your Queen Mary China, um, what you should do is you should always hand wash it. Never stick it in the dishwasher or any kind of automated dishwashing thing. Wash it by hand. You can use perfectly hot water. It's, it's fine in hot water as long as your house isn't like, you know you know, 40 degrees Fahrenheit and your sink water is like 120 degrees Fahrenheit, that might crack the china. But if your house is like a normal room temperature like mine, anywhere above 65 degrees Fahrenheit, um, you, you can just stick it directly in some hot soapy water um, or use a, use a sponge. I use a sponge to wipe these. I use the, the soft part of the sponge, no abrasives. Because the reason why is no matter how lightly you, you scrub with abrasives, if you keep doing it and keep doing it over the course of time, maybe months, maybe years, you'll eventually just wear out the decoration on it. So use the soft part of the sponge. These things, you know, they don't, they don't get such harsh use that you need to use a scrubber. So soft side of the sponge, soapy water, and then give it a good rinse and then let it air dry on like a drying rack or something. I would, again, I would not use... A heated dryer like I wouldn't stick it in the washing machine and turn it to the dry setting um, because that heat might be too intense so um, so yeah all 
hand method of washing. So that's how you do it. Hot soapy water, soft part of the sponge, no abrasives. Um, Matthew says, you're really down to earth and really do speak to your audience, unlike some other creators who put on an air of loving their viewers, not to insult them, different circumstances, etc. But you're genuine. I, you know, I try to be because I've, I, I, I watch YouTube as well as I make YouTube stuff. So I watch all these people on YouTube. And as much as I would love to talk to them and be like, oh, you know, like, this is great. I love your content. And some of you have actually seen me in comment sections going, hey, great job. I love this video. Like, I've actually had people go, hey, Alex, you're here. But, yeah, I do try to, like, talk to other YouTubers because I really, like, I, there are some YouTubers I love to follow. Um, but those same YouTubers don't do much talking to their viewers, you know. When they do live streams, they they answer, like, one or two of people's questions, but they don't bother to, like, read as many of them as they can. Sometimes that has to do with just the fact that there's so many people watching and the comments are just flying by. But, but yeah, I... I always told myself from day one in 2016, I said, when I do this YouTube channel, I'm going to be the kind of person that is always engaging, always trying to talk to people, always trying to make friends. I try to be as positive as possible with people. Sometimes I run into people who I think are, are rude and maybe, you know, my reaction isn't so well, but I, I try to be as honest as I am with people. I tell people what I think, how I think it, <laughs> you know, and... I'm not unreasonable, you know, so I, yeah, and I love talking to people who love talking about all the stuff that, you know, we talk about, <laughs> what am I trying to say, you know, people who are interested in ocean liners, uh, trains, Disneyland, that kind of thing, I love talking about that stuff, so it's, you know, it's really nice to be able to connect with you guys, because you all watch this content, so, um, yeah, so, and I, I try to do it as best I can to research, too. Sometimes I'm just wrong with my research, but I will not let anyone tell me that I don't try, because I certainly do. Um, oh, Mateo's going to head out. See you later, Mateo. Um, Pookie Smoochie says, can't wait for your QE2 video. Yeah, that's probably going to be a while from now, but I'm definitely still doing research on that. I have so many things that are on my research list. Like, I have all these tabs on my computer open of, like, various subjects, like ships and and places and things. <laughs> because I start working on one project, and I'm like, okay, i got to work on this one because that one's going to be too slow. And then I start working on that one. I'm like, that one's too slow, so I'll start this one. And then that one too slow. It's like, oh, my God. I have, next, thing, next thing you know, I have, like, ten tabs open on my computer with all this stuff I'm researching all at once. Um, Sarah says, Dale Chilholy Blown Glass Museum. Oh, wow. You know, some blown glass stuff is actually pretty cool looking. I'm not normally a fan of blown glass, but have you guys seen that stuff that, what's his name? Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy from, that did Pineapple Express, the, you know, real gruff guy. He does glass art now, and pottery as well. And his stuff looks so weird and cool. I would never buy any of it, but still, it looks really weird and cool. Um, Peter says, are you planning on opening up another restaurant or work in food? No, I can't. Because of my schizophrenia, it makes it really difficult to work at all in a in a traditional working environment. So I, I can't open another restaurant. I can't work in food again. Um, uh, Sarah says, look up Museum of Glass. Okay, I will. Chris Taft says, hi, Alex. Loved your tour of the Queen Mary. Thank you so much. I made one major mistake in that video. Well, actually two. In the very beginning, I say the ship's hull was made of one million rivets and my script said 10 but i read it as one so that was one that, that's like something that really annoyed me for months afterwards so uh let's see maggie says art deco style and i have already created the vessel's history do you want me to tell you yeah make it brief though because this is a live stream but yeah i do want to know um chihuly 
Oh, Chihuly. S SB says Chihuly. Okay. Let me dip this in the tea real quick. I should end the live stream soon because I still have more work to do on that video. And then I have to make myself dinner in like two hours. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for dinner. I have chicken defrosting. Thanks, Dwight. Yeah, so my, my Discord server, which will be available to paying members, on there, you'll be able to basically talk with me any time of day. If I'm, on, if I'm on the computer or I have access to Discord, whether it's on my phone or on the computer, I should be able to respond usually at any time. And then I plan to do like special live streams. So like my members can talk to me if I'm cooking myself dinner or something. So even if it doesn't have anything related to the channel, you'll still be able to communicate with me on that. So I have to update the membership services on YouTube to reflect the new stuff that's coming. Um, so I have to remember to do that. Um, let's see. Sarah says, you've motiv motivated me to get cucumbers and make those sandwiches. I don't treat, drink tea, but those sandwich those sound delicious they are they're really delicious they're really refreshing despite how heavy they may sound like the cream cheese and the mayonnaise sounds really heavy but when you have it all together into a sandwich it is really light flavored um sb says any upcoming disney history videos uh, yes um I have, I, so I have a bunch of videos lined up in my head on what I want to do next. And one of those is a Disney history video. I want to do the Rivers of America, which is a video I haven't, I haven't uh, done yet on, on my most recent video series of Disney history. So I want to do Rivers of America because I want to talk about the Mark Twain Riverboat and the sailing ship Columbia. So it'll be a, like, it'll probably be... Maybe a two or three part series. I'm not sure. Depends on how much I can write. But that will be done from scratch. So while I am redoing certain videos and re uploading them, such as like, you know, upcoming as Pirates of the Caribbean and, and you know, and then um, other stuff. I'm trying to think, like, what other stuff do I have? You know, the castle, it's a small world. But there are certain things in between that I'm going to write from scratch. So one of the ones I'm going to write down from scratch is Rivers of America. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully hopefully people watch it, you know? Like, if it's going to be a two- or three-part series, that means I'm going to be spending weeks on it. And I'm really hoping people watch it so that way it wouldn't have been a waste of time. I need thousands of people to watch it. Um... People loved my Disneyland Railroad series. That was well worth the time. Tons of people watched that series, and that was well worth the time. Because that took me weeks, and no, no, that took me months. Because I started in January of 2021, and I didn't, I didn't finish the, the series and start publishing it until, like, fall of 2021. Yeah, that was, oh, my gosh, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> so I was just hoping for some recipe videos from you. Yeah, certain things... I do so much cooking just by eyeballing it. So I, while I can make recipes and stuff like that, some of my recipes are so hard because I'm like, oh, use like this much of this. But I suppose if I'm making a video and you can see how much I'm adding, you could probably do it yourself and figure it out easily. So I could do that. Um, but I wanted to reserve the cook this the the, the official cooking videos um, 
for historically related stuff. So like food that was cooked on ocean liners and stuff like that. I want to save it for that. Um, don't forget new people who are joining in. I have a second channel, Alex Adner, spelled A-D-N-E-R, where I have like other more personal content that is related to the historical stuff that I like. So trains, ocean liners, all that stuff is on the Alex Adner channel. Oh, boy. Kelly says, I will watch all of your upcoming Disneyland history videos, Alex. Thank you so much. Yeah, I do need people to watch those when I do bring them out. Mike Burns says, your monorail video is also great. Thank you. I need to put out a Walt Disney World monorail video because I have one that I'm currently working on and updating because I did publish it a long time ago, but now there's new information that I could add in there. So there is one that I have to work on. It's the Walt Disney World monorail. And then when the Walt Disney World Railroad reopens after its three-year three hiatus or something like that, um, then I will create a brand new video specifically for the Walt Disney World Railroad. It won't be very long because there's not much history to it. It's basically not changed at all. But, uh, but it will be an interesting video. Um, so Tom says, ooh, what's that in the background? This is my ON30 scale railroad layout. So these dark lines you see across the board are the tracks. And you will see me be able to build this. You'll, you'll see me building this railroad in, in bits and pieces on my Alex Abner channel. So you'll be able to see me like constructing it and stuff like that, get tours of it, and you'll be able to keep up with it as a series, like an ongoing series that will last years, because these things never end. Um, so you'll see that on the Alex Historian channel when I do that. It's, there's currently nothing on there, but I do plan to make an introductory video on how I got this far. Um, but yeah, right now the Alex Historian channel takes precedence. So. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. I have the trains and everything in my sister's garage. I just have to bring them out. Um, but all I have here is the tracks and the table that it goes on. Yeah. Um. Um. Pookie Smoochie says, I made chicken a la Maryland. That was served on the Titanic for lunch one day to first class passengers. It was amazing. That's cool. Uh, Peter M. Valad. Yeah, Peter says, Can you show us how to cook the churros at Disneyland or the bow buns? Uh, I don't want to do bow buns, but churros, not so difficult. I could show you how to make churros. Uh, yeah, that's possible. It would probably be on the Alex Adner channel, though, not on the Alex the Historian channel, because people who are on this channel don't want to see that stuff. So, um, SB says, love the Rivers of America. Your history videos are by far my favorites on YouTube. Thank you. Um, Linda says, looking forward to the building of your model railroad. It's so awesome that your interests are so close to mine. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's really nice to, to, to meet people who actually, like, have these same interests. Like, I'm such a nerd. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, Maggie says, did you see my previous comments? Um, let me see. Uh... Maggie says her name is Alexandria after you because you are intelligent, funny, and very cute and awesome. Thank you. I guess the, the ship you're building is named Alexandria. So thank you. Um, Armist Queen Mary says, what do ocean liner, why do ocean liners not exist anymore? I have a video about that. It's actually called, um, like, where did ocean liners go or something like that. It's, it's, if you look, if you look up my random history series, it's on the front page of my on my channel. You'll see the video. It's got a picture of Titanic on one side, and the QE2 on the other side. So really interesting video. So let me see. 
got to finish these things. It's funny because usually tea time ends at 5. It's already 5.47. And the tea is cold now, but I have so much fun being on these live streams. have to do so much dishes after this. That's the one thing about doing these um, tea times is you use up so many dishes in order to do it properly. Oh yeah, Matthew says it's called Why Did Ocean Liners Disappear? Yeah, <laughs> I forgot the name of my own show. <laughs> Queen Mary says, you see my other comment? Yeah, I did know there was a Queen Elizabeth III. It's not technically called Queen Elizabeth III, though. It's just called Queen Elizabeth. Um, but yes, I do know that there is a third one, and, and they it's currently a cruise ship. Um... Maggie says, please see the ship history comment that it starts with she was built. Okay, let me see. Oh, there it is. She was built by Harlan and Wolfe and entered service in 1938. Served in World War II after Pearl Harbor. Left ocean liner service in 1970. Been a cruise ship ever since. And now a hotel ship in Astoria, Oregon. Oh, wow. Neat. I like that little history that you created. Uh, let's see. Honda says, what scale are the trains behind you? Got to get some vids on that. Uh, this scale is ON30, which is a very rare scale. If, if you're not a um, train nerd like me, ON30 means it's O scale, narrow gauge, 30 inch. So 30 inch meaning the space in real life between the rails. Although 30 inch gauge never existed in real life, 36 inch gauge did though. Um, but essentially it's HO scale track, but O scale trains run on it. It's a narrow gauge line. So um, yeah, so really neat. Uh, there will be videos on it on the Alex Adner channel eventually when I get around to it. I still have to get the stuff up from the garage, because um, I only just brought this in last weekend. Uh, it was, it's was it been in my sister's garage for two years, but now I finally have the time to work on it. The bridges need to be rebuilt, so that's probably one of the first videos I'll do, is repairing the bridges, because this thing can roll, and we rolled it all the way down from one side of the complex to this side, and even though it can roll, the bridges collapsed, <laughs> because because it was just the the vibration of like rolling the table across the the asphalt had just vibrated the bridges to the point where they just collapsed so i do have to to do that but um matt c says hey alex would you consider cooking a dish from titanic's first class menu of course that's what i want to do i have to find the recipes though that's that's the number one issue i don't know how to find the recipes so if anyone knows how I can find the recipes to ocean liner food, like actual, like old ocean liner food. <sighs> I would love to see it. So that way I can try to buy the ingredients and replicate it. So, um, all right, see a drown plays. Um, Professor Ismail says the reason ocean liners are almost as severe is because of the aviation industry. Yes. Although the funny thing is, is my video on it, people don't even watch the video. They just go, oh, planes. They like put that in the comments. I'm like, okay, but there's like a lot more to it. Like, what's the reason? Like, you know, like if you're new to the ocean liner industry or, or if you're new to the ocean liner topic, 
then when you when someone else just says planes, it doesn't make the full sense because then people would be like, well, wait, but then how come there are cruise ships? So there's actually like the reason why I made a video on that subject is because first you have to explain what an ocean liner is and what it did and what caused the issues that led it to disappear and what sealed its fate for disappearing. Because while planes were the cause of their downfall, it wasn't 100%. Ocean liners are naturally built differently than cruise ships, and that was part of the reason why they couldn't last, was their construction. So there was, like, a lot more to the story. And so it's funny, like, I, I get annoyed when, like, random people come to my channel and they're like, airplanes, in the, in the comment. And I'm like, that's not the full story, you know? But anyway, that, uh, yeah. So... See, exactly. Queen Mary just asked the, the question I was just saying. But why why not cruise ships? If cruises are made for having fun, I don't see. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's, it's because there was a lot more than just airplanes that brought it down. It was a whole systematic thing that just brought down the ocean liner. Um, Maggie says, The SS Alexandria has one raked and streamlined funnel. Nice. Armist Queen Mary says, did you see the Britannic movie from 2000? I did, actually, yeah. Um, good movie. Very low-budget movie, but good movie. Um, SB says, what do you think of the Galactic Star Cruiser at Disney World? If it was a lot cheaper, then it would be worth it. But being thousands of dollars, I, don't, I would never pay that. Not even if I was, like, as rich as Elon Musk. It would, to me, it would be, like, a waste of money. So... Yeah, I, I I, don't think it's worth that money. But it doesn't look so bad if it was a, if it was relatively affordable. Um, Matt C says, what's your opinion on Cunard's current ships? Um, so aside from the Queen Mary 2, because I love the Queen Mary 2. It's, an, it's a classic ocean liner. It does transatlantic crossings. It's beautiful on the outside and the inside. Um... As for the other ships, those are mainly uh, cruise ships. I don't generally like cruise ships, but I feel like Cunard does cruising well. It's it's uh, dignified, it's fancy, and it's very British. So I actually really like Cunard's cruise ships. But I'm not a cruise ship person, generally. I actually don't really like cruise ships at all. So I just prefer classic old ocean liners. I don't even like ocean liners that are post-World War II. I like everything pre-World War II. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Tyler says, I wanted to ask if you heard of HMHS Britannic. Yes, of course. Um, RMS Queen Mary says, Have you seen the Lusitania movie called Disaster at Sea, I think? I have as well. Yeah, really good movie. There's a famous actor in there. Uh, he's like the one famous actor. Um, but yeah, good movie as well. Tyler says, first Cunard was RMS Coronia, known as the Green Goddess. I've heard of that one too. Although I'm not sure why she was called the Green Goddess. Were her interiors green? Queen Mary says, have you also seen the Poseidon movie? Yes, I have. Good movie. A little cheesy for nowadays, but good movie for what it was. Tyler says, where's Cunard cruise ship on me? Okay. Pookie Smoochie says, why didn't you like the SS United States? I don't think it's a beautiful ship. Um, it was very... I just don't like ships after... The Second World War. 
everything changed. They no longer looked classic. They no longer looked elegant and beautiful, at least not in the way that I like. I like everything from Art Deco to before Art Deco. Um, the other thing about SS United States is that uh, there was almost nothing organic on it because they insisted on making it as fireproof as possible, so they gave it all these um, all these new materials that were not that were not as easily combustible. So there was nothing organic about about the SS United States. It was a cold aluminum and plastic place. And it's just not I don't like it. I also don't enjoy the aesthetics of the 1950s. There are some 1950s things I like. I like the Googie architecture. I like the mid-century architecture. Um, but only in small doses. So I wouldn't want to stay in, in a ship that looked like that. I love the wood in the older ships. I love the wood paneling, the warm look of it all. Like, the... As the United States didn't have that warm look. It was very blue. There was lots of blues everywhere, plastic paneling, you know, um, formica paneling, that kind of thing. Um, lots of vinyl and veneers. And but, but older ships from before the war, they had lots of wood paneling, very warm, comfy, cozy atmosphere. That's why I love ships from before World War Two. So. Um, Matt C says, wondering why you don't particularly care for Normandy. So the reason why I don't particularly care for Normandy is, so remember how I said that I love ships that have a warm look to them, lots of wood, lots of organic look to it? Normandy used a lot of metal, glass, crystal, and marble. And so those are very cold elements. They don't have a type of warmth to them. Um, their, the place is very, the Norm Normandy was very like palatial, like modern palatial. And I feel like Normandy, and this is, this is where people don't like my opinion, but I feel like Normandy was kind of gaudy and overdone. I just don't like it, you know, and... It just doesn't look cozy to me. It doesn't look nice. I would never want to stay on the Normandy. And the outside of the Normandy, the exterior of the ship, was so different than a classic ocean liner. I like the classic ocean liners. You know, Queen Mary was one of the last ocean liners to have that classic ocean liner look. Um, with the, with the, um, the vent intakes and the, and the covered um, bridge wings and the, um, the well deck at the bow and all that stuff, like, you know, and the straight edge, you know, front. The Queen Mary is one of the last ocean liners to have that. Um, and so that's why I like the Queen Mary so much. But, but I also love the more classic ocean liners. I love the, the original Mauritania, the Lusitania, the Oceanic. Uh, some people call it the Oceanic 2 because it was the second one, but... Oceanic from 1899, and, you know, I love, uh, uh, the, uh, the Ile de France and the SS Paris, no, was it SS, no, SS France, um, the original SS France, so, you know, um, stuff like that, Normandy just doesn't do it for me, it looks weird to me, especially the funnels, yeah, I'm just not a Normandy fan, I don't like it. Um, RMS Queen Mary, are you just asking questions that I've put in my video names? Because you're literally asking the same questions I've put in my video names. Like you asked, you asked why did ocean liners disappear? That's the name of my video. You're asking why, why is the bridge called the bridge? I have videos on that. So I'm hoping you're not trying to like spam the chat with stuff. Um, which was White Star Line's last ship? White Star Line's last ship was, I mean, it depends on, on how you think of it, um, but uh, White Star Line became part of Cunard in 1934, so in a way, 
one of their last ships was the the Queen Elizabeth. Before that was the Queen Mary. But you'd have to ask somebody else um, what their last ship was before they, you know. Georgic, somebody says. I think Georgic was, yeah. I think Georgic was the last official White Star Line ship. Um, oh, okay. All right. Because some people, some people, they spam the chat by asking or rephrasing the names of my videos. And so I just don't like it people do that because I can't tell if they're mocking me. But, um... Uh, Professor Ismail says, Thank you so much for the Queen Mary's update. I'm an ocean liner historian from Singapore, a.k.a. the only ocean... a.k.a. the only ocean liners in Singapore. Nice. Yeah, I'm an ocean liner fan, too. I try to keep everything up to date. Um, I get... I get all my information corroborated from the people at QMI Restore the Queen, the, the nonprofit that's been fighting to try to fund the Queen Mary's repairs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you know, Singapore has, you know, you already know this, obviously, but Singapore has a huge history with ocean liners, especially British ones and Cunard. Cunard often sent a lot of their ships to Singapore and stuff like that. And especially during World War II, Queen Mary went there to get her her fitting out for World War II in Singapore. So it's really cool to see uh, other ocean liner fans from all over the world. Um, SB says, Queen Mary needs to bring you on staff as their historian. <laughs> I don't think I'm qualified, but... It would be cool, I'll admit. If they said to me tomorrow, they said, Alex, we want you to be, you know, full-time on the Queen Mary, helping to preserve its history and document it, you know, I'd be, I'd be there. I'd be doing it in a second. I would love to. The Queen Mary is my favorite ocean liner, and, and I want to see her successful. I want to see her living on. So, uh, let's see. Do you know how many shipwrecks there are? No, I don't. I don't. Lots of them, though. <clears throat> Philip says, what do you think of the Wilhelm Guslav? I haven't seen it. I know of the Kaiser Wilhelm. I know of the Kaiser Wilhelm II. I know of the... No, 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 no. I know of the Kron Prince Wilhelm. And the Kaiser Wilhelm. And the Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse. I know of those three. But I don't know of any other German ships. Um, Tyler asks, Have you seen the ghost ship? The ship was based off Andrea Doria. Ghost ship. Oh, well, that's funny. I, for some reason, I thought that movie was based off of Queen Mary. Didn't they shoot a scene on the Queen Mary? Like, on the top sports deck of Queen Mary? The scene where everybody got cut in half by the rope? Something like that. But yeah, I did see it when I was a kid. Well, teenager. Henry Hall fan says, Coronia was painted green for her tropical sailings. Is that why she was called Green Goddess? Maggie says, SS Alexandria is driven by five propellers. Hey, that's cool. I always wondered, before I became an ocean liner fan, I always wondered, I, was like, I wonder if there's a, an ocean liner that has six propellers. But there isn't. I'm trying to think if there are any military ships that have six propellers. I don't think there are. Well, I mean, not unless you, not unless you count a, a cruise ship. Sometimes cruise ships have four azipods plus two, three, or four thrusters at the front. Those kind of count as propellers, but that's not the same. Um, let me catch up with everybody's. Uh. 
Uh, Matt says, do you think White Star would eventually take over Cunard if they had been the majority shareholder when the two merged? Yes, absolutely. It, literally, the, the whole thing was based off of who had the majority share and who had the most ships. Um, and White Star Line had just scrapped a bunch of ships. So they, if they had kept those ships for just a few months longer or so, they, they could have been the majority. And they would have, they would have been, uh, they probably would have still been Cunard White Star, but then eventually the Cunard would have disappeared and it would have just been White Star. So they probably would have lasted longer, but, but Cunard had the most ships at the time, so they got it. I'm actually kind of glad. Sort of. Sort of. It, it would be cool to still have a White Star Line, but, but Cunard has a longer history than White Star Line. So I almost feel like it, it, it's just the right thing that Cunard lasted. Um, Dirt Dog asks, is the Queen Mary really haunted? You know, some people will say yes. Some people have had experiences on there. I haven't had anything much. One time I was walking through the propeller, um, the, the shaft alleys, and I thought I saw a person walking on the catwalk just across from me, but I, I didn't see it fully. So I, But aside from that, I've never had any haunting experiences on the Queen Mary. Aside from that, I, I never felt the Queen Mary was at all a scary place, like, you know, and I've, I've spoken to people who used to work on the Queen Mary before they marketed it as haunted, and they said, oh, no, nobody here ever, ever saw anything scary, and then after Disney took over, they started asking people to tell them scary stories so they could write it down and tell it on their tours, and, and most people didn't even have scary stories to tell, so Disney had to make up some. So, yeah, I... I don't, if the Queen Mary is haunted, then I don't believe she's haunted by mean or evil spirits. It doesn't feel that way. When you walk on the Queen Mary, it feels so happy and so, like, 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 a, like the ship was loved at some point in its history. Not now, <laughs> but, like, the ship was loved. It felt like a positive place to be. So, um... Sarah says, that reminds me of the joke. Did you know there are more planes in the sea than submarines in the sky? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, Professor says, about ocean liners in Singapore, the history of it, not well known here. I've tried to do some research about it, but found nothing. Oh. Well, that's sad, because Singapore had a, a really... Uh, so they had they had several um, dry docks there that I know that they took several ships there for um, for refitting during the war, but it was also a, a place to stop off for other ships in White Star Line and Cunard that were going through those oceans, and they needed like they, they if they needed to stop somewhere to be quickly dry docked for any reason, Singapore was one of their stops so. Yeah. Oh, I see, Tyler. Okay, so it's a completely different. It was a set. Okay. Hello, Evan. Um, Savannah says, have you experienced Dark Harbor at Queen Mary? No. Um... No, but I I I know what kinds of things goes on there because I used to be I used to design haunt mazes and I used to be a like a, a scare like a haunt talent scare person don't even know what they call it um, so I know what kinds of things go down there but I know they want to bring Dark Harbor back when the Queen Mary reopens before Halloween so I just hope that they don't put Dark Harbor in the Queen Mary anymore because whenever they put it inside the ship, it just damages the ship every time. Of course, they still have stuff set up inside there and they never took it down. All fire hazards. 
Um, Empire of Waterloo says, Hi, Alex, what tea did you have today? Today was Irish breakfast tea. So, uh, <laughs> so hard to like make it so the light doesn't shine into it. But yeah, Irish breakfast tea because on Thursday I had Earl Grey. And of course, I always have English breakfast tea. So, today was Irish breakfast tea. Um, Matt C. says, what's your thoughts on how Bruce Ismay was treated after the disaster? Unfairly, I'd say. Um, they needed someone to blame, and so people blamed him. Um, but then again, it's still, it's still not for sure how much he helped during the disaster. They say he helped people get into boats. Some people saw him doing that. But how many people? And did he, like... Because in the movie, they showed him, like, you know, help people get onto the boat... And then right afterwards, he, like, jumped on, right? Like a coward. <laughs> and in real life, people did see him helping others onto boats. But I I don't know how long he did that. Was it like the movie where he just jumped on afterwards? Did he stay until the ship was going down? I heard there was a story where, where he's... No, 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 no. Someone else said the captain stepped into the ocean, and that's where he died. I don't know, but... Yeah, I don't know much about Bruce Ismay in terms of, of during the disaster, but I do know that he didn't deserve all the blame. People gave him all the blame because he was, like, the easiest target. Um, yeah, uh, Professor Ismail, I yeah, I understand. Um yeah, it's difficult when people don't care about ocean liners. You know, to them, to, to most people, ocean liners are just cruise ships, you know, like, and Titanic was just some cruise ship, you know, Queen Mary was just some cruise ship, and it's, when you, when people, like, relegate it to that, then of course it doesn't mean anything to them, and that's the sad part, like, like, ocean liners, they did such amazing work in our, in our world history, you know, they weren't just ships. They did amazing things. And so it's just really, you know, all kinds of people. Like my, like I, so I'm doing research on the Johann von Olden Barnevelt, which also became the um, TSMS Laconia. And that was a ocean liner that uh, operated for the Holland line. And I was doing research on it. Next thing I know, my friend tells me, hey, he goes, hey, Alex, I found out what ship my family um, mi uh, migrated from 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 Indonesia during the war to uh, to to Holland. He says it it was the it was the TSMS Laconia, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing the history of that. And so for him, that was like really cool because that has something to do with his family's history. And there was another woman too that said something about how she. Another woman said that she she uh, immigrated from from uh, the Netherlands to Australia aboard the TSMS Laconia or Olden Barnevelt. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I have to do this video now because so many people have history with it, and almost no one's told the story. It's just a very tiny like story. Oh, RG says, can you taste the difference between Twining's tea? Some say they taste the same. No, I can totally taste the difference between Twining's Irish breakfast and Twining's English breakfast. You can taste the difference. And then, of course, their Earl Grey is a whole different world of flavor. So I can taste the difference. But the thing is, is I've had Twining's tea that are in bags those don't taste different from each other. For some reason, they all taste the same. It might have something to do with the bags themselves. But this is all loose leaf tea, so the only flavor you should be getting out of it is just the tea, not the bags. So I do recommend loose leaf tea whenever you're trying to do something traditional. Um, let's see.
SB says, is there a crew keeping up the maintenance on Queen Mary during the closure? Technically, yes, because right now the Queen Mary's undergoing repairs, but it's not just a maintenance crew, like not just light bulb changers. There are people that are going in and installing brand new bilge pumps, people who have removed the lifeboats so that way they don't crush the promenade deck, you know, with the weight eventually. Um, and people who, um, who are going in there to, uh, to work on some electrical and plumbing work and stuff like that. So yeah, there's some restoration work going on. I say some because not all of it, but some restoration work going on on the ship right now in order to get it reopened. So yeah, there's crew there. And then of course, then of course they're, they're still, um, allowing filmmakers to go on the ship. They pay a big hefty sum, like $15,000 to film their TV shows and movies on the ship. So people have to be there, like security has to be there to make sure the ship is fine. So uh, there needs to be more going on in terms of the, of the Queen Mary's restoration, but this is all we have for now, and that's better than nothing, so. Um, hello, Zevi. Um, Savannah says, Alex, will you be the first one to visit Queen Mary when it reopens? I can't promise it'll be the first one because, you know, it is a lot of money to go down there, you know. But uh, but I will be among the first because I really want to film new footage on the ship so I can make more videos out of it. Because, you know, there's some there's a lot of videos I want to make for the Queen Mary and I just don't have enough footage of it. I have lots of footage of the Queen Mary and I've borrowed footage from other YouTubers who have filmed, but there isn't enough footage especially of things that no one has filmed before. So there are places on the ship that no one has bothered to take their camera to film it, and I want to be there and do it. So uh, let's see. Alex, if you could go back in time, would you love to have experienced Titanic's maiden voyage? No, I don't want to die. <laughs> No, if I could go back in time, if anything, I would go back to experience Queen Mary's maiden voyage. That's what I would do. Uh, Pookie Smoochie says, I've started having tea with you every time you go live. It's become one of the favorite parts of my week. Such a calming ritual. You, sh you, tru you should try Lady Grey by Twinings. I will try. I, I, I didn't even have money to buy, to buy new tea. All I had was like one tin of English breakfast and then... Um, someone donated to my Venmo, and I was able to I was able to get more tea. So that's why I got the Earl Grey and the Irish breakfast next. But at the moment, I I don't have the money to buy any other teas. So um, let's see here. Uh, Jennifer says, Alex, did you know they found evidence of ocean liners existing thousands of years ago, just like Queen Mary? No, I've never heard of that before. Um, Matthew says, last time I went to walk around the Queen Mary port, it was heavily guarded. And pictures from QMI, there was a meeting, Mary. Yeah, the ship looked ship shape. She has been taken care of. Yeah, um, I was, I, I posted uh, Mary's pictures uh, on my updates. So whenever you see my updates, those are the pictures that are taken by the members of QMI. So um, they gave me, you know, permission to put them up on YouTube. So Evan Scott says, lifeboat's still for sale. Yes, they're not being sold for money. They're absolutely perfectly free, but they, um, but you, the requirement is that you have to have a solid plan for what you're going to do with them. And you have to have prior experience doing restoration or caring for artifacts. So, yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> Professor says, whenever I talk about Titanic, people would always think I talk about Jack and Rose. Oh my gosh. Charlie says, is it possible to make loose leaf tea without a pan, pot, or container? Uh, for example, pouring hot water over it on the table? Huh? Why would you...
Charlie says, Alex, did you read Queen Elizabeth is planning to be in attendance for Queen Mary's reopening? No, she's not. She can't travel that far anymore. She, she is officially done with traveling overseas. She's too old. Um... Matt C. says, what does the Queen Mary smell like? Uh, I know, random question, but I wonder, considering its age. So it's funny. <laughs> when I walked aboard the Queen Mary, it smelled like, like a library. That's what it smelled like to me. Have you ever been to an old library full of books and wooden shelves? It smells like a library. So the smell of wood, essentially. Old wood, not new wood. And so, yeah, that's the best example. Queen Mary smells like a library. Um, and it's funny because I can always tell when, when people describe to me the smell of Queen Mary, I can tell whether or not they've ever been to a library <laughs> because, because they'll always be like, it smells musty. And I'm like, it smells like a library. It smells like wood. Well, it smells like something. And I'm like, it's old. It's full of lumber and wood. Like, it smells like a library. And I love the smell of libraries. Some people don't, though. They don't like the smell of libraries. But I do. I love the smell of libraries. Because I love books. So, um... But yeah, the Queen Mary smells like an old library. The kind of library that is full of wood paneling, wood shelves, wood railings, you know, and lots of old books. Um, Jennifer says, lots of good questions and interactions today as usual. Thank you. I do my best to interact with everybody. Um, Philip says, I'm glad the Queen Mary isn't the only retired ocean liner still in existence. There is also the Queen Elizabeth II currently in Dubai. Yes, that is correct. It'd be nice if I could visit the QE2 in Dubai, but Dubai is too far away for me. Um... Have a great night, SB. Charlie says, Alex, did you read? Oh, I've already read that one. Matthew says, there's also a Japanese ocean liner preserved in Japan, I'm pretty sure. The Hikawa Maru. Yes, that's correct. Hikawa, Hikawa Maru is in Japan. Uh, a friend of mine wants to see that one. Um, Armas Queen Mary asks, what was the first ocean liner? That depends on what you mean, because technically sailing ships were also ocean liners. And sailing ships go back thousands of years. So um, it's hard to say, but the first steam-powered ocean liner was built by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Was that right? Isambard Kingdom Brunel? Yeah. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody. But it was built by Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and it was the SS Great Eastern. Or the Great Western. Jeez, he built two. One was the Great Eastern, one was the Great Western, but I don't remember which one is the older one. So it was either the Great Eastern or the Great Western. I don't remember. And then, uh, and then among the first ocean liners was Samuel Cunard's um, uh, SS Britan Britannia. Trying to remember all this off the top of my head. It's so difficult. Um, uh, Charlie says, Alex, in attendance virtually over Zoom. Interesting. I never knew Queen Elizabeth even cared about the Queen Mary. You know, Queen Elizabeth was on the Queen Mary once. When Queen Elizabeth was little princess Lilibet she went to visit the Queen Mary before it went on her maiden voyage. And she and her sister Margaret played in the first-class children's playroom. They went down the slide, and ever since then, Cunard decided to call it the Royal Slide because the royal children had went down the slide. And it was funny because on that day, Her Majesty Queen Mary was presenting, uh, was presenting um, the ship, Queen Mary, with her own royal pendant, and um, not sash, but, but pendant, and um, and it was funny because her son, uh, who would 
who would be King, well, who was King Edward the <laughs> Eighth, was also touring the Queen Mary that day. So the you know so so there was all the royal family was all over the ship that day, and King Edward the Eighth was uh, was looking at the marble pendant of. Um, of Queen Mary, the one that's still on the ship today, and it's like a flat, giant marble coin that has her carving of her profile. And he looked at it and he says, "My, what a, what a scowl mother has on her face." And so, it was, oh my God, that was funny. I loved reading about that. That was funny. Wolf Gaming says it smells like a library because it has a lot of history. Definitely. Savannah says, was Queen Mary only made of wood, no steel? No, she was made of steel. So she, so think of it this way. The skeleton of the ship was made of steel. Riveted steel, not welded. Riveted steel. But everything that decorated the skeleton, everything that became the meat and the fat of the RMS Queen Mary was mostly all based around wood. So... If you were to take off one of the wood panels on her walls, you will see every so many feet or meters, as they say, are like steel framework that hold the weight of the ship. But in between that are the wooden studs and beams that hold up the walls. So it's mostly wood to a certain degree, but the ship is made of steel as its skeleton. Um... Queen Mary asks, what does HMHS mean in hospital ships? So it means either His Majesty or Her Majesty. It means, so let's just say right now we have Queen Elizabeth. So it would be Her Majesty, Her Majesty's hospital ship. So HMHS, Her Majesty's hospital ship. If the monarch is a man, it will be His Majesty's hospital ship. Um, Haley says, I also love the smell of libraries. I, yeah, I love the smell of libraries. Uh, Maggie says, I had my first transatlantic voyage on QE2. Really? Oh, that's really cool. I can't wait to have my own transatlantic voyage. That'd be so fun. Um, RG says, Alex, what would you say to the first person to create a sailing ship? I would say, wow, that's big. You sure it's going to get across the ocean? <laughs> um... Professor Ismail says the Great Western was the first, um, the first steam ocean liner. So yeah, I thought so. I knew it was it was either I was like it's either the Great Eastern or the Great Western. I always get them mixed up because I think so. The Great Eastern was for the longest time the biggest steam ocean liner ever built. Yeah. Um, Savannah says, have you read the new Walt Disney book that's coming out? No. I have as many things about Walt Disney as I'm, as I'm satisfied with. I don't feel the need to buy anything else. Tyler says, Isambard built three ships. The first was Great Western. The first steam and ocean liner was the SS Savannah. Was it really? But the Great Western, the Great Western was steam as well, wasn't it? The Great Western was a, a paddle wheel on both sides, wasn't it? I think so. The SS Great Britain, though, was the first to have a propeller, right? The SS Great Britain is in Bristol. That's the one I want to see, the one in Bristol. Uh, Matt C says, I heard that Queen Mary was not meant to be originally named Queen Mary. That is true. Um, so, I have to be really careful how I say this because some people get so angry at this story. But, but there is a story. Some people will say it's rumor. Other people like me will say it's fact. But essentially, the story goes that, that Cunard wanted to name 
the Queen Mary actually Queen Victoria after the greatest, you know, Queen of Britain. And according to the story, they contacted uh, the, the then King of the UK, that would be King George V, and in in casual conversation, this wasn't an official request, it was more like casual conversation. They, they said, we would love to name our ship after Britain's greatest queen. And his response was something to the effect of, my wife would be delighted. <laughs> and, so, and so they realized then that they couldn't then tell him that they wanted to name it after Queen Victoria because then it would be kind of insulting <laughs> to assume that Queen Mary was not on their list. So supposedly they named it after Queen Mary. Now the press, the press all says that they that they thought it would be Queen Victoria, and that's why this that's where the story came from. Um, yeah, Cunard denies it, and so therefore people say, well, if Cunard denies it, then it's not true. But there's been situations like that before, sort of. I mean, um, did you know the QE2 was originally just going to be called the QE? So Queen Elizabeth, it was just going to be called Queen Elizabeth. It wasn't going to be called Queen Elizabeth II. It was just going to be called Queen Elizabeth because Cunard does not name their ships two, at least not before then. And so what happened was uh, Queen Elizabeth II came to name the ship. It was supposed to be named after her, Queen Elizabeth. But because Queen Elizabeth II is called Queen Elizabeth II, by accident or on purpose, she said, I now name this ship Queen Elizabeth II. And when that happened, uh, they realized that they had to, uh, they had to put a two next to it. They couldn't put two, like, you know, the, the Roman numeral two, um, because they, they don't do that for ships. They don't name them half, like, they don't name them the second. So they put a number two. That's that story. And that is a real story. That is a true thing because someone who worked in Cunard at that time said that that's what happened. So we should, I should end this live stream. It's like going on forever. Um, Savannah says, isn't wood porous and can leak? Well, okay, I, I, I meant that, like, the interior walls of the ship were made of wood. Uh, but the outside of the Queen Mary is steel-plated. Steel-plated. So, um, so the, but the Queen Mary's insides, the, the walls on the inside, the decorative stuff, is all wood. But not, not the hull. The hull of the ship is, is steel. It, it has to be for a ship that size. Um... RG says, Alex, what's for dinner? I actually don't really know. I have a spaghetti squash, and I have a bunch of stuff that I can make. Um, I can make a vegetable curry and put that on top of the cooked spaghetti squash. So I'm thinking about doing that. I also have tofu, so I can put that in there too. So it'll be like a vegetarian dish. I'm not vegetarian, but occasionally I like to eat vegetarian. So that might be what I'm doing tonight. I also have chicken defrosting, so I could always just do something else, like I could cook up some rice and then and then bake some chicken. But I don't know. I think I'll just do the vegetarian thing tonight. Um, Armist Queen Mary asks, how many propellers can a ship have? As many as it needs. There's no limit. I mean, the, the only limit is what is financially and, like, what is financially feasible and what is logically feasible um so i don't know of any ships that needed more than four uh but if a ship was big enough you could put six and you know it's only as many as you need um charlie asks what was the reason the boat was named after mary oh i, I thought i just told that story 
Um, maybe you asked it while I was telling it or something. Um, Savannah asks, what's your favorite Queen Mary joke or riddle? I don't have one. Um, oh, I see. Savannah was 1819 and Great Western was 1838. So, yes, both were paddle steamers. But with... Was Savannah not... Wait, no. So Savannah was paddle steamers, and that would make the Savannah the first steam-powered ocean liner, wouldn't it? But Professor Ismail said, Great Western is a paddle steamer. Great Britain is propeller-powered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the Great Britain is propeller-powered. The, the Great Britain is the one... I, the SS Great Britain is the one I want to see in Bristol because it's propeller-powered. Um, but Professor, could you tell me... Tyler says Savannah which was a steam paddle, a, a, a paddle steel, steamer, came before Great Western. So wouldn't that make the Savannah the first steam-powered um, ocean liner? I'm curious to know. <laughs> Pookie Smoochie says, this has got to be your longest tea time to date. Yeah, I know. I should have ended this like 38 minutes ago, <laughs> at least 38 minutes ago. I always try for one hour, and then I end up going two hours um uh charlie says did you know sir samuel cunard changed his last name from butterfinger <laughs> so that the greatest ocean liners were close to coming from the butterfinger company <laughs> okay that's funny i like that one <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop thinking about that. I'm trying to read the other comments and I can't stop thinking about the Butterfinger thing. Um, Armist Queen Mary asks me, how did you find out about the Titanic? I, when I was a kid, I saw the movie Titanic in theaters. And ever since then, I've, I've been a fan of Titanic. Although you wouldn't know it because the, the video I'm currently working on that I'm hoping will come out tomorrow is basically all the reasons why the Titanic is kind of overrated. <laughs> <laughs> so people are going to think I hate Titanic when they see the video tomorrow, but I'm trying as best I can in the video to tell people I don't hate the Titanic, but it is overrated. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, Dirt Dog says, what's your favorite Queen Mary song? That I can answer. My favorite Queen Mary song is called Somewhere at Sea. It was composed by Henry Hall. So that's my favorite Queen Mary song. Um, RG asks, favorite Queen Mary dance or clothing? I don't know if a Queen Mary dance or a Queen Mary clothing. Uh, Matt C says, love live stream. Thank you so much. I got to end it now. It's just going too long. I got to, I already have to start working on dinner and I have to, haven't even finished my tea yet. It's like two and a half hour old tea. Mmm. Doesn't taste good anymore. Um, the professor says, I've done some research. Yes, some say Savannah was the first, and some say Great Western was the first. Oh, so it's one of those things where people can't agree. Oh, I hate those things. Thomas says, I prefer Olympic over Titanic, but Titanic got me started in ship history. Yeah, same here. Titanic got me started in ship history, and from there, I branched off into Queen Mary. And n now I'm learning about all these other ships, but currently my favorite ship of all time is the original RMS Queen Mary. So, uh, Matt C says, do you think Titanic Honor and Glory team were the catalyst for such big community of historical ship enthusiasts on YouTube? Hmm... I think that they were part of the reason why there's such big groups, but there's always been, there's always been, um, uh, ocean liner enthusiasts. Like they're like, ask some of the, the original ocean liner enthusiasts, you know, like, um, uh, like, uh, like Ken Marshall and stuff like, you know, people like, people like him, you know, they were like the OG, 
you know, Ocean Liner fans. And they all, you know, they would all attend events that happened on ships like QE2 and stuff like that. Well, I don't know about Ken Marshall, but I'm sure he has. But, but things like that, you know. So, but, like, they were, like, the OG people. And they would, you know, meet and discuss things on email and stuff like that. So, so... T- Titanic Honor and Glory, they helped bring more people together, but I wouldn't say they were necessarily the catalyst. Um, Professor Ismail says, it's because of the 1997 Titanic movie that made me interested in ocean liner designs. Yeah, me too. Me too. There was a time when I was stuck in what I call the Titanic bubble. It's the bubble where a lot of new Ocean Liner fans only care about Titanic and they, like, hate every other ship. And it happens to some people. They just get so attached to Titanic that they can't see the beauty in other Ocean Liners. So the video I'm hoping to have out tomorrow for everybody addresses that issue, addresses the issue of the fact that there's some people who just don't care about other ships because they think Titanic is the best. And that's where I have to burst that bubble. So I think it'll be an interesting video. So I hope you guys all watch it. Oh, I got it. I keep finding new comments. Armas Queen Mary says, how do the Queen Mary lifeboats move? I told you twice already. I have a video on that. It's called how you can buy a lifeboat, a Queen Mary lifeboat. And in the beginning of that video, it talks about the propulsion system of Queen Mary's lifeboats. So that's that's how you have to watch the video. Um, Dirt Dog asks, "Do you know if there's any Queen Mary underwear to buy?" I don't think there is, but I think people can make it, and that'd be cool if you bought it. I've seen people buy uh, make Queen Mary blankets. Um, Petrus King says, "Why did the Spruce Goose move from Long Beach to Portland? Because Disney at the time had owned." or owned the lease for the land that the Spruce Goose was sitting on, Disney wanted to build their theme park, Disney Sea, in that area, or no, Port Disney, I'm sorry, Port Disney in that area. Um, and so they told the people who who owned the Spruce Goose, get it out of here because we want to build something over this land. They went and found the Evergreen Aviation International who offered to take it off their hands and build a museum for it up here in Oregon, um, and that's how it happened. It turns out that after that deal was struck, uh, Disney gave up on the Port Disney idea, and it turned out that Spruce Goose would have never had to leave Long Beach, but it was already too late. The deal went through. Spruce Goose went to um, McMinnville, Oregon in 1992. That's where it is today, McMinnville, Oregon. So if you guys want to see it, anybody who comes to Oregon or whatever... The Spruce Goose is inside an aviation museum, a massive building, and then next door is a building about space, but the whole museum is called the Evergreen Aviation Museum in McMinnville, Oregon. Really cool. I enjoyed it so much. I can't wait to go back. Um, uh, Sarah says, cut us off, eat dinner. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut you guys off. All right, you guys, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, Be sure to check out my second channel, Alex Adner, spelled A-D-N-E-R. That has more of my personal interests on it, so more of my personality is in there. You'll see me, uh, eventually I'll make videos about how I'm building this model railroad. You'll see eventually a video about me um, rebuilding my Titanic model, which is in terrible shape right now. I have to rebuild it, repaint it, everything, take it apart piece by piece and redo it. So you'll eventually see that. There's already videos on there about all my artifacts and things and everything I own and how I have the tea set and all that. So, um, and then eventually I'll have other videos on that channel about how I make stuff that is once served on as uh, food that was once served on ocean liners. I'd like to do that. Um, if you'd like to support my channel, you can always become a member of the YouTube channel. You just click the word join. It's right beneath the video. If you can't find it, there's a link in the description below for how to join as a member. Or you can join Patreon, and very soon I'll update the information on both the membership and the Patreon on how you can become part of the Discord server 
which will be for the highest tier members um, to become part of the Discord server where you can directly talk to me in Discord and we can hang out and I can show you guys cool things that I can't normally put on YouTube, stuff that YouTube would just flag down <laughs> that I can't put on YouTube. So you'll be able to see stuff like that on those on the Discord server. So let me, so yeah, so I gotta go now. I gotta make dinner. I gotta clean up. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you all on Tuesday for the next um, the next tea time. So Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much. And by the way, thank you, Professor, for watching. I hope you stick around on the channel because it's fun to talk to you. So bye-bye, everybody.